Let's go here with the front design, which is from the basic form, kind of resembling to the Lexus RX or to the NX, Stephanie. So it has the Lexus design language, just that the grille is all the way closed because not so much cooling is needed for these electric vehicles. This is here, this dual tone copper paint. Very interesting color, definitely also with different light nuances. We also have some other colors for you to hear today. For example, a very interesting light blue called ether or also a white vehicle. Or what about a rather dark gray one? And finally, also one in black. Which one would be your choice? Tell me. And of course, world news here also premiere of the new steer by wire system. So you don't have a mechanical link from the steering wheel to the wheels. This will be super crucial to test here today. The new one versus the classic old one. We'll do that for you and tell you which one is better and also if it's better than the Tesla yoke system. Look at that. 150 degrees left, 150 degrees right on the steering wheel means full lock left, full lock right on the wheels. This is this new technology. Wow, looking forward to it. The length is at 4 meters 80 or 189 inches and that means it is about 11 centimeters or 4 inches longer than the siblings, the Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru Solterra. Yes, they share the same platform, so technologically they are pretty similar, but Lexus has some news here for us. They have different things actually, both exterior technology and also in India, which they do differently than the siblings indeed. And then the wheels, 18 or here, 20 inch wheels. These are the optional bigger ones and all wheel drive, one electric motor in the front, one electric motor in the rear. And the overall sprint is 5.3 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. However, the front electric motor is the stronger one. Talking battery size, there is this number of 71 kilowatt hours, but that is the gross figure. The real usable one is 64 kilowatt hours net. So DC charging is maximum 150 kilowatt. And that means 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. In the rear, beautiful, consistent design here with the light strip going all the way through. So I think it does have a premium look, doesn't it? This is the key fob. Oh, it's test vehicle number two. You know, number two, second, is always the first loser, they say in racing. <laughs> then door closing sound. Yeah, that's a winner, actually. Nice door closing sound. And on the inside, this is here the trim with the ultra suede so there's a microfiber surface really nice looks cool feels cool top part here is somewhat soft touch as well also good quality at the inside of the doors this is here the door release you just press it that's like an electric helper but if you want pure manual you would pull this one here twice so this then the fail safe so to speak and there will also be a fail safe for the steering wheel not a mechanical one like they used to have with the Infinity when they introduced it. Here, this is always electric, full way, 150 degrees to the right, 150 degrees to the left, that's it. And this is actually how it's supposed to be. Not like with the Tesla yoke where you have to steer all the way around. This is how it should work. And the fails is actually another electric system that when the first electric system fails, the second one is there for you that you can still steer. What do you think about this and about the seats? This is very interesting. These here are the microfiber seats, ultra suede, really nice and cozy, looks cool, feels cool. And the seating position is really very comfortable indeed. Good shoulder support as well. And they are available in different colors, fitting to the exterior color, for example, here with the blue and the bluish note. That looks amazing indeed. Or more subtle gray, darkish note. Or if you want it really rather screaming out, a full brown leatherette interior. And all really great from the interior quality and from the comfort. And also the microfiber interior here is also available in beige, for example. Look at that. Headroom with 189 or 6 foot 2 is fine, actually. And even larger here with the electrochromic roof. This is an option. And it will even give you some more headroom. And here, this is actually dimmed at this moment. And then we can undim it. That looks really cool, right? Goes also really quickly. And wow, if you look against the sun, it looks even more impressive. Interior overview, once again, of course, this new one motion grip steering wheel, they call it that way. 
is the most prominent feature. And the interesting thing is, when you have this special steering wheel, it's an option. You can also go for a normal round one. Then here, the dash, the whole instruments, are two centimeters further away and also two centimeters higher to once again more fulfill the aspect of being a head-up display in one. But you also have a head-up display additionally. Hmm, interesting. The steering wheel here goes up and down like this, by the way. So like the normal steering wheel. And then you also have these buttons at the steering wheel, but you see what you're doing in the head-up display, which is kind of irritating, I find. On the right side here, 14 inch widescreen. The CarPlay integration is quite impressive indeed. This is also working wirelessly. And Android Auto is also possible, this connection, by the way. And here the Mark and Levinson sound system is giving us a very nice surround sound. Yeah, like that. That's actually pretty cool. And the Lexus system itself, not that impressive. You also have a car internal GPS, which is quite responsive. And it's also really important to deactivate a very special feature, and that is the screen beep. And listen to that. Really? Yeah, so annoying, so good that we can also deactivate it. And now take a closer look here. This is the seat heating, this is the steering wheel heating, and this here is the normal climate unit. And then you can control it here. Here the light control is at the steering wheel. It's actually a cool function, why not? And the turning indicators have a separate stalk column. It's short behind the steering wheel, but I think that's a good idea in comparison to the Tesla where the controls are on the steering wheel. And I'm really glad we still have a manual volume jog here. Just the field below that because you can press it, but it also reacts to capacitive, like this movement does the same and that is a little bit irritating because one of the advantages of this new steering cockpit is you have a very clear view to the digital instruments. They are kind of basic though. And the head-up display it looks like this then here when you change things and it's a little bit irritating I have to say and the whole quality of the head-up display is also not on the rest level like the rest of the interior. Here in the lower part I have a nice camera view button like this and you can directly access all the camera features. Other than that you have two USB-C chargers here and one USB-C connector and you have the inductive charging pads down here and this is the gear selector press it down for drive down reverse left <sighs> i'm not sure not the biggest fan of this solution but it's also not too bad then adaptive cup holders right here and finally the middle armrest here can be accessed from both sides right or left oh and look at that the ambient lighting is also really nice here at the inside of the doors being projected from right here then it gives this structure at the inside of the doors. Pretty cool. Interior in the rear here. First of all, the doors also in this suede trim than here in this version. And the top part is also somewhat soft touch. Good build quality once again. Leg room. It's no problem with this EV, pro, uh, EV platform. So there is some leg room left. Although you sit, you maybe see that relatively low. So you feel a little bit lost, so to speak. But also headroom wise is okay. It fits for at least four, if not five, tall adults. Then to the trunk or boot, electric hatch, of course. And then you can see here 520 liters overall. This is, by the way, here the difference between the rear bench. You can put it more upright or put it more to this sleeping position, so to speak. There you also have a difference in the trunk capacity. Also some space underneath, for example, for the charging cable. Does it have a frunk? No, it does not. However, interesting, look at that. Here is a Yamaha performance damper as dome strut for more stability. Interesting. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge, Lexus RZ. We start with an acceleration. Let's go. Plop, that's 80 kilometers an hour. So that was zero to 80 kilometers an hour. Really quick indeed. Wow, impressive, very smooth. One electric motor in the front, one in the rear. That's cool. Of course, now directly to the most interesting thing here about this very version, the new steering concept, one motion grip or steer by wire. And I immediately feel it's something completely different if you compare it to the Tesla yoke. 
because here the input is really precise and direct and you don't have to steer much at all. When I'm going slalom here, and I mean like a really wider slalom, look at that, that works with minimum steering input. So yes, you have to be somewhat careful with the steering input, yes, because when you accelerate it, it just steers basically just more. But what they also included here is the faster you drive, the less sensitive it gets. So you also can have a like rather calm autobahn experience, for example. So that is a very helpful thing. And when you are parking in and out, then it's getting more sensitive again that you can easily ease the car in and out of the parking. That's pretty cool. So here now, about 50 kilometers an hour, it surprisingly doesn't feel that unnatural. The driving experience itself is also pretty silent and smooth. We already experienced that with the Toyota BZ4X. Is there a significant difference between the BZ4X and the Lexus RZ in driving? This one here is quicker, I told you that earlier, so like a second faster in the acceleration. The main difference is, of course, now the steering, but it will also be available for the Toyota later on. And here, this one is also coming in 2025 for the Lexus RZ, so an exclusive insight we have then here for you today. Temperatures today, not really freezing, but also not warm. It looks sunny, but it's actually quite cold from the air temperature. And we had different trips and different vehicles here today. And the consumption between 18 and 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometers, that's around 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Not that efficient. That is a crucial thing with this EV. And also the battery size, it's just too small. That's the thing. That's actually the most major thing with 64 kilowatt hours net. It is smaller than with the competition models. And that's why the range is also lower. If you want to compare it to the competitors, do it right now.